Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Today. And as we mentioned in our last video, we're here with our weekly bulletin. So without wasting any time, let's begin with China's space activity worrying Pam Melroy, nominee for NASA Deputy Administrator. Not long after becoming a nominee for NASA Deputy Administrator, Melroy received questions regarding China's space activities during a Senate hearing. After the US, China has become the second country to land and operate a spacecraft on Mars. NASA also has its own future plans for Mars, but will they perform most of the activities with Chinese space authorities? In that context, Melroy said NASA would continue to follow the law. It's there to ensure that the U.S. thinks very carefully about any kind of engagement with China. However, we have to operate together in the space domain, so there are times when it's in the best interest of the United States to talk to China," she added. Moving on to the second update, billionaire entrepreneur and SpaceX CEO Elon Musk believes that the next logical step for humanity's development in space is to build a permanent base on the moon and a city on Mars. Building a colony on Mars will take a huge amount of resources and time, but if everything goes according to plan, then it will be humanity's next step beyond space stations. Terraformation is the key to make life habitable on Mars. Life in glass domes at first, eventually terraformed to support life like Earth, Musk stated. Terraforming will be too slow to be relevant in our lifetime, however we can establish a human base there in our lifetime. At least a future spacefaring civilization discovering our ruins will be impressed humans got that far. Musk predicts a potential Mars landing could be achieved by 2024 to 2026. However, we're still very far away from building a permanent colony on Mars, as it can take 30 years more or so. Moving on to our next segment, Europe is making notable progress on the sovereign LEO constellation as they do not want to lag behind from OneWeb and Starlink. According to Europe, the new Low Earth Orbit LEO flagship program will come with secure connectivity so citizens can use this service without worrying about data leak. This program will mainly focus on covering rural regions and areas which do not have proper communication services. Thus, it's a good alternative for OneWeb or Starlink. This service will include networks that European satellite operators are providing in geostationary and medium Earth orbits. NASA's Parker Solar Probe captured the exceptional beauty of Venus. The probe, which was designed to study the Sun but not a planet, achieved an optional goal by gathering Venus data. It showed a perfect demonstration of turning trajectory maneuvers into science opportunities. The probe gathered data about the types and speed of charged particles that are traveling beneath the Venusian atmosphere and interplanetary space. The probe's observations also showed tiny phenomena in Venus's electric and magnetic fields. These are really, really, really tiny things," stated Shannon Curry, a planetary physicist at the University of California. But we finally effectively have like a microscope there that we can start to understand these sort of things with, and we've never had anything close to that. Next, China recently postponed its Tanzhou 2 launch due to some unspecified technical issues. Tianzhou 2 was scheduled to lift off from the southern island of Henan this Thursday. The uncrewed cargo spacecraft had an important role in testing robotic technology to help build China's future space station. Unfortunately, Chinese space authorities delayed the launch this week and did not specify a new launch date. The primary goal of this mission was to deliver fuel and supplies to the country's first and central module of the space station called Tianhe. This mission will play the key role for human arrival to the space station. Meanwhile, China is developing new modules for its future space station in orbit. Startup spaceflight company Rocket Lab is backtracking all the data from its 20th Electron launch, which failed to accomplish the goal. On May 15th, an Electron rocket successfully lifted off with two commercial satellites but did not make orbit. The rocket experienced some issue within three minutes into the launch. Preliminary data reviews suggest an engine computer detected an issue shortly after Stage 2 engine ignition. 
causing the computer to command a safe shutdown as it's designed to do, the company officials said in a statement. The behavior had not been observed previously during Rocket Lab's extensive ground testing operations, which include multiple engine hot fires and full mission duration stage tests prior to flight. We deeply regret the loss of Black Sky's payload, and we are committed to returning to flight safely and reliably for our customers," stated Peter Beck, CEO of Rocket Lab. The European Space Agency is working on a future satellite constellation that aims to provide navigation and telecommunication services on the moon. It sounds cool when we say someone's using GPS and Skype on the moon. ESA could make it happen by the end of the decade. Having a navigation and telecommunication network to relay what we learn on the moon back to Earth will be key for sustainability of future missions," stated Elodi Vau, the Director of Telecommunications and Integrated Applications at ESA. You can imagine astronomers setting up observatories on the far side of the moon, and as we've all now become accustomed to virtual meetings, who knows, we could be doing Skype on the moon. NASA helps U.S. Small Business Department by investing a big chunk of money. NASA's Small Business Innovation Research SBIR, program is giving 140 new Phase II awards worth $105 million to 127 small businesses to help their market grow. The companies under this funding include 33 women-owned, minority-owned, and also veteran-owned small businesses. The Phase II contract period is an exciting time as a small business put their ideas into practice and develop prototypes attractive to NASA and private investors," stated NASA SBIR program executive Jason L. Kessler. The selected technologies have displayed great potential impacts for their respective sectors, and we're proud to continually invest in today's booming aerospace economy through these small businesses. Space tourist Yuzaka Maizawa wants public opinion about what to do on a 12-day space trip. As we know, the Japanese billionaire will soon fly to the International Space Station aboard Russia's Soyuz MS-20 spacecraft. The launch is currently scheduled for December. I want this experience to be for everyone, not just me. And so I came up with this plan, what should I do in space? What should I bring to space? He stated on his website. I need your ideas. He talked about some examples like, do you move forward when you fart in space? What happens when you play Pokemon Go in space? Call someone on Earth from space. And the list goes on for Maizawa. What else do you think? NASA's tiny helicopter, Ingenuity, is up for its sixth flight on Mars. The helicopter previously conducted five successful flights. This time it will fly up 33 feet, or 10 meters, then move a little bit southwest for about 492 feet, or 150 meters. When it achieves that distance, the rotorcraft will begin acquiring color imagery of an area of interest as it translates to the south about 50 to 66 feet, 15 to 20 meters, stated officials of NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Southern California. Stereo imagery of the sand ripples and outcrops of bright rocks at the site will help demonstrate the value of an aerial perspective for future missions. After completing its image collection, Ingenuity will fly about 164 feet or 50 meters northeast, where it will touch down at its new base of operations known as Field C. The sixth flight is scheduled to take place next week. Our rapid-fire news report has come to an end. The last segment is based on Russia deciding to sell a space module which returned a Russian and two American astronauts from the International Space Station three years ago. Descent Module Number 738 of the Soyuz MS-08 mission is available on the Glof Cosmos web portal for purchase. This lander can become an excellent exhibition showpiece for any public or private exhibition dedicated to aerospace, as per a statement issued by Glof Cosmos, a subsidiary of Russia's Roscosmos, Space Agency. Back in October 2018, this module safely returned cosmonaut Oleg Artemyev, NASA astronauts Andrew Feustel and Richard Arnold to Earth. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this. 
hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your valuable feedback in the comment section. This will help us to improve.